So our first fantastic piece today features the Mentor Legion, a popular chapter of the Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader early years, or months even. Now the Mentor Legion are a very interesting chapter, uh, more in their original incarnation where they tested out new Imperial technology and then mentored other Imperials in the use of it. Like a chapter of test pilots. Intriguing stuff, eh? The Space Marine having his armour put on, or removed, has a very common haircut of the late 80s action hero. I believe the correct name for it is a crew cut. A lot of the old bare-headed miniatures had this haircut, although I've never ever seen anyone with it in real life. Maybe I should get it done. Now regarding the armour donning or doffing, there appears to be a piece missing from underneath the main shoulder pad. I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a smaller piece that goes underneath that massive pauldron. Although I don't have any proof to hand. Are there any Space Marine armour experts in the comments today? If so, then comment away. Amusingly, the serf, or whatever that is, wearing the monk's robes, has a face that reminds me of pre-special edition Emperor Palpatine from The Empire Strikes Back. I sense the presence of a Jedi. I think they put prosthetics on a woman's face and then superimposed monkey's eyes on in the movie, which is fascinating stuff. Now if you take a look at the stained glass window in the background, you will see a strange looking spaceship. Does anyone recognise it? Will we get a model of it one day? Now I don't know if it's because I have Star Wars on the brain now, but to me it looks a bit like the Razor Crest from The Mandalorian. I'm Marcel and this is Snakeworks. David Gallagher has been a wargamer and a fantasy artist since he was a little un. He was born a Scotsman and trained at the Dundee College of Art. His painting skills were honed by studies of wildlife, natural history and the human form. He soon established an enviable reputation and his images of British wildlife appear on many greetings cards. Warhammer 40,000 features strongly in David's gaming interests and his talents stretch from painting pictures like the ones you're about to see to building his own models. One of them, a dinosaur mount for plastic space marines, was available through a mail order back in the 80s. When he's not painting, gaming or building, he can be found trekking the countryside with his wife, Alex, a member of the Sealed Knot, which is a Civil War reenactment society. Now, I myself am a massive fan of Dave Gallagher's artwork, and I can't wait to share some more of it with you guys. Now, I'm going to assume a lot of youngsters out there or people who are new to the hobby won't have seen much of Dave's work. So that needs to change now. Let's jump in. So our next piece of art is what I assume to be depicting a siege. I think our attackers are dwarfs. Dwarfs were very popular back in the 1980s and sadly not as popular today it seems and I feel that needs to be changed. Now I wonder if this piece was created to coincide with the release of the Mighty Fortress kit as the castle in the background looks a lot like it. It might even be on the box art but I've never seen the box of the Mighty Fortress so I couldn't tell you. I really like the atmosphere that's given off in this piece. It's a lovely night scene with a nice warm glow effect from the fire that the dwarves are cooking on. What do you guys reckon they're cooking? Conies? Potatoes? Now if you weren't aware, that was a Lord of the Rings reference where Sam cooks for the trio. I know Sam isn't a dwarf, but it still reminded me of it. I do have to wonder, just who are the dwarves fighting? Nobody looks to be in any particular hurry. Perhaps it's actually their castle in the background and they're just watchmen out on the grounds for the night. Any suggestions, anyone? 
Oh, actually, I think I can see an orc on the top of the castle, so I'm going to go with orcs. Now, sadly, I never had that mighty fortress kit. They go for silly money nowadays on eBay, about 200 pounds. So I probably won't be getting one anytime soon. But have any of you got one at home? Did you ever have one? What were they like? I think Skaven are the focus of this next piece. I don't know too much about Skaven, but I'm sure fantasy rats are called Shaven. Also, I'm getting fed up of my autocorrect again, as it keeps calling Skaven Shaven. They're not Shaven, they're furry. Now, I reckon this is some sort of Skaven cult meeting, as they all look very secretive and sinister. A bit like the managers in my last job. They were secretive sorcerous swines. Most of the characters in the scene are what I think are Skaven, like I said, but I think there's also some other animals in there. I'm sure I can see a warthog, a minotaur, and maybe some lizardy things. Well, maybe it's not a Skaven army after all. It's like those old Battle Beasts toys. Whatever is going on here. Now, the statue at the rear is holding a pot of something. I have a feeling it might be blood. This statue reminds me of something from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Who filled the blood pot up anyway, do you reckon? What's it for? Very important questions indeed. Also, check out the Rhino character at the bottom left. He looks like Bebop or Rocksteady. Now, nobody ever knew which of those was which. Let's get them titles. Terrible. You know, after I've spent all this time looking at the picture, I think it might actually be a Chaos Beastman cult. And now I feel a bit silly. Now, when it comes to Chaos Beastman armies, do you actually get any other animals in there? I really don't have a clue at all about how Chaos Beastmen operate. The only beastmen I know are the Old Hammer, Imperial Guard beastmen, the only beastmen worth knowing about. They were the best beastmen. Oh, and the guy from He-Man. Beastman! I think he was red and furry. Medic! You might have guessed it, but this next piece features various different medics, or apothecaries as they're known now. For Space Marines, that is. Now, this is really top-of-the-line artwork when it comes to the Rogue Trader era. This is so good, you could put it on your wall. Now, today's art is nowhere near as good, and if you disagree, you're wrong. Sorry. There are two different Space Marine chapters features in this. There's a Space Wolf, the guy standing up, you can tell by the logo on his banner, and the Marine on the left is a Crimson Fist. Poster boys of the Rogue Trader era. Infinitely better than boring old Ultramarines. Yes, even I collected those once as a lad, but we don't talk about those times anymore. Also in there is an Imperial Army Medic, back from before when they were known as the Imperial Army. Do you think he will actually be any help with fixing up that wounded Space Marine? Now it's hard to see. To the right of the Space Wolf is a squat. Yep, they had medics too. With a feeling this art accompanied the release of the Imperial Medic miniatures and that's why they're all hanging out together. The squat isn't really helping with the medication as it were, he's just blasting away. So anyway, I started blasting. The enemies of the scene are orcs. In particular, the RTB-02 Orcs. You can tell by the lovely padded or quilted flak jackets that they're wearing. That stuff looked good then, and it still looks good now. I love it. Now, sadly, the quilted armour or flak jackets have seemed to have gone the way of the dodo in contemporary Warhammer 40,000. And I feel that's a bit of a shame. Hopefully, one day we shall see it return in some capacity or another. Now, guess who this is. If you said Rabute Gilliman, you'd be wrong. And if you said Timmy Mallet, you would be wrong. It's Marnius Kalgar. To be honest, I don't even know if he had a name at this point. I might have to check my old hammer research notes. Even way back then, he had his famous double fists, allegedly won from a Chaos Marine in combat, which I always thought was a little odd, as I'm pretty sure those weapons would have been corrupted and destroyed. Did I miss something there? Someone let us know, please. 
On the right hand side are a couple of dinosaurs. I once heard a rumour the Ultramarines kept them as pets in Rogue Trader, but I'm not sure if that's just a load of old lies. I've never found the reference that that claim comes from. Have you? One of the dinosaurs is being used as a writing pad holder to write his shopping list. What's on his list, do you think? Six bolter shells, one rhino tank, five crack grenades, and one quilted flak jacket. The best part about the whole piece, though, is the picture of the Emperor in the background, hanging on his wall. I guess this is a bit like the military leaders of the UK having photos of the Queen on their wall in the media. Well, I suppose it should be the King nowadays. The last time I think I saw that was in a James Bond movie. Minister? So I suppose I really should have a picture of King Charles III on my wall. Which wall could I put it on? Couldn't really put it there, it's a window. I suppose I could put it up there, but this isn't the studio going forward. This is still the temporary base. Is it worth putting a picture of King Charles up in a temporary studio? What we do have in here, however, is Mr. Ikea plant. He's still alive, you'll be pleased to hear. Say hello, Mr. Ikea plant. He grows quite slowly. I think he's called a snake plant. Now, in my notes, I've called this picture the Red Siege, and I think that's a nice name. I wonder what the real name for the piece is. So here we have Marines attacking a fortress. Again, it looks like the Mighty Fortress, so I'm going out on a limb and guessing this was another marketing piece. Did you guys know the Mighty Fortress was also usable in Warhammer 40,000? No? Well, now you know. I can't tell what chapter those Space Marines are from. The demonic head makes me think they're perhaps the exorcists, but I really don't think they existed back then. If any of you know, then again, let us know in the comments below. The Shouting Marine has a lot of metal head bionics. He looks like a Borg. Amusingly, Mrs. Snakeworks always thought that Picard became the cutest of Borg. I had to explain it was Locutus. We still laugh about it now. I really love the Old Hammer style shark faces on the Space Marine helmets. They look a bit like World War II era fighter nose art, and we need more of that these days. We really miss a lot of this old character, don't we? Also in my notes, I've written the word screech next to scream, and I have to admit I've no idea what I was thinking and I don't know what that means. The only screech I know is the one from Saved by the Bell, and I'm pretty sure this isn't him. Now, my old mates used to watch Saved by the Bell every morning without fail during the summer holidays of old. I always thought it was rather rubbish, to be honest. Now, didn't the main girl in it become a porn star or something? Not that I would know. Anyway, how good was the old summer holidays morning kids TV shows? It was brilliant. We used to get up at like six in the morning and they'd be on all day till about lunchtime. Everyone used to be watching that. Good times. Now, when I was a lad in the summer holidays, I was always treated to a Hot Wheels car, and I have one here. This one is a DeLorean, nice blue DeLorean. But anyway, on the back, it says, if you're enjoying this video, then please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. That means you, Boris. If you are enjoying the content here on the channel, then please consider joining the Patreon, the link to which is in the description below or up here somewhere. Here we have a very serious looking young lady. She looks like a girl I used to work with, Sylvie. Hello, Sylvie. I doubt she's watching. My gut tells me this young lady is a dragon slayer. I've deduced this by looking at the dead dragon next to her. I was going to suggest maybe the dragon's asleep, but its head has been cut off, so I don't think that's really up for debate. The lady is equipped with all the gear, like Arnold Schwarzenegger in Commando. She's got a sword, a dagger, and loads of pieces of strap-on armour. But no grenades, though. Now, originally, I thought the faces on her knees were a symbol, being black and white halves, and I was going to suggest that was the old chaos god, Malal. But it's just a chrome effect, isn't it? I must have been tired when I first looked at it. I don't actually know what this piece was used for. 
Was it used as a book cover or something? There's a nice big open space for text at the top left. Maybe it was one of those choose your own adventure games. Someone please let us know if you've seen it before. Also, there's something about this piece that reminds me of one of Roger Dean's pieces. I think it's the little pointy parts sticking out in places like the dragon spines and the sticks in her hair. What are they, by the way? If you haven't heard of Roger Dean, I strongly suggest looking his work up. It's bloody brilliant and he is one of my favourite artists ever. Now, when I was doing my art A-levels, when I was an artistic professional, or student. I studied Roger Dean for my... what was it? What's the name of the damn thing? Critical study? I think it was a critical study. Anyway, I studied him and we had to study too. And the other artist I studied was Boris Vallejo. Now I want to know, is Boris Vallejo in any way, shape or form linked with Vallejo Paints? Did he start that paint company up? Are they his responsibility? I never really thought about it before. I'll go and have a look on Google. Wow, check these guys out. These are old marines. These must have been drawn before any schemes and chapters had been set in stone. The camouflage is very interesting indeed. Bright red with wiggly lines and eye-blinding yellow with lightning bolts. It's fantastic. The guy in the back is just blue though. The marine on the left had a miniature and he was called Brother A Skull. I wonder what the A stands for. Alvin? Alvin! There's another reference for you. Ten polo holes to anyone who gets it. This time, the weapons do not look like your typical bolters. I have no idea what these things are. They look very good though, regardless. Maybe they're those disintegrator guns. I've also just noticed that bayonet. It's like a huge kitchen knife. Wowzers. Now, as well as the weapons being unknown, the opponents in the piece are also unknown. Knowing the era of the piece, though, it's probably just orcs. Everyone was killing orcs back then. Hell, they're still doing it now. You know, these strange marine camouflage schemes would be quite fun to paint nowadays, I reckon. Maybe we should have a go sometime. What do you think? Such lovely artwork. If you want to see some more art-themed videos, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. As always, thank you very much for watching, and always remember to drill your barrels.